I want to start off with uh, a really simple question, and I'll give you a few moments to respond in your head. What is your purpose? Okay, time's up. <laughs> now, when I asked that question, two possible situations could have occurred in your heads. For starters, um, you may know exactly what your purpose was, a definitive idea of what that life looks like, which you are probably living today, which is fantastic. Alternatively, and more than likely, you may have had a number of thoughts come into your head, some of which may be truths and some of which you are completely uncertain and confused about. And maybe you're a little annoyed that I only gave you a couple of seconds to respond. So what is your purpose? I mean, if you are searching for this, should you not know? Should I not know? How, can I have multiple purposes? How about if my purpose is the wrong purpose? How about if today I have a purpose and tomorrow it changes? Does that make me some sort of purpose hopper? Did I just make up the term purpose hopper and now I'm on a completely different track of thinking about the word purpose hopper and thinking maybe it has some validity? Can I be purposeless? Is that even a thing? Should I be upset about that? How hard should I take this question? How long should I be thinking about this? Am I, be, am I supposed to be wasting this much time on a question of what is my purpose? How much of my life should I be searching for this question? You see, I thought about this question a lot. Well, why don't we take some examples? I mean, Steve Jobs, he knew his purpose. How about Google? Google information, I mean, their purpose, their intention, their vision is to organize the world's information and have it organized, accessible, and useful for individuals in this world. That's an amazing vision and purpose. But I'm not interested in technology in terms of starting a technology company, so maybe that doesn't apply to me. Well, why don't we take a look at someone like Jack Johnson? I mean, he's artistic and he's a musician and his purpose is clear. He creates music to inspire, educate, and entertain individuals through love, through the messages of love, building relationships. I mean, that's exciting. But I'm not a musician. So maybe that doesn't apply to me. Well, how about we take someone like Vishen Lakhani? He runs this organization called Mind Valley, which seeks to push humanity forward. Wow. Push humanity forward. I could be aligned with that. I'm in. I'm going to be pushing humanity forward. If anyone asks that to me, I'm going to be pushing humanity forward. But in which way do I seek to do that? So now I'm back to being confused again. So back to square one. Well, I have one more that maybe we could use and maybe you could work with me, Oprah. Everyone knows Oprah. Everyone knows Oprah. I mean, she has a clear purpose. She inspires. She makes you think about, you know, your fears and how to break through them, standing for courage and a life that is filled with purpose. And if I could only, but I don't really want to have a talk show, or maybe I do, I don't know. Or, and I don't have a really a network or a forum or maybe I could. But maybe I could Oprahify this talk right now and tell you that there is purpose under your chairs right now and you get purpose and you get purpose and you get purpose and everyone here gets to go home with purpose. <laughs> I wish I could say that, but it's not that easy. So I don't know how far down the rabbit hole I could possibly go. I mean, I would probably end up somewhere between my life is a confused mess and it has no definition or I think I need to take a vacation from my own life. <laughs> As change agents in this world, we seek for a greater meaning and purpose for the actions that we take in this world. We have an intention, a very clear intention for a transformed world. What that looks like sometimes is a little confusing to us. How we are going to play a role in that is sometimes a little confusing. But we all have the agent of change within us. So we think that having purpose would be the key 
to knowing exactly how we can do it? Or is that really the case? So my name is Ali Samani and I'm an entrepreneur and ed social, I'm an entrepreneur and educator. And in one life, as an educator, I work with students on a day-to-day -day basis and I teach them about social enterprise and education. In another life, I work with entrepreneurs and I help them craft their visions in a sustainable and impactful way that changes the world. So, when I work with these two different individuals or groups of people, it's really interesting because although the curriculum, the curriculum is the same, or rather varies with the individuals, the message and the questions that get asked are the exact same. And four years ago, I was going through a moment of utter failure. I thought that I had everything together. I invested my entire savings in a thought that I thought was my purpose, only to be left empty-handed in a situation where I felt purposeless. I mean, on paper, I had the credentials. I had graduated from a great school. I had gone to, I had a number of amazing internships and experiences, but yet I felt purposeless. Have you ever felt that way? Working for an organization or doing something in your life where maybe there was something else, maybe there was something more in which you can create a significantly greater impact. So here's what I did. I created five principles upon which I would live my life. Because you see, purpose is really about living a purposeful life. We don't live purpose, we don't seek purpose to actually reach a certain accomplishment or achievement in our lives. We seek purpose to have a succession of fruitful and exciting moments in our life. And what does that really mean? It means that you get an opportunity to live purposeful today. And there's no need to wait for this like divine intervention or this note on a book or something or the other that says, you now have purpose. Or Oprah tells you like, check your chair, check under your chair, it's there. It's not gonna work that way. What is really gonna happen is you get to choose this moment right now as a change agent because you've already chosen transformation. You've already chosen a transformed world, a better world. A world where you see your truth exist. So why not live that truth today? I chose these five principles because they represent everything that I would believe in today as I would be most proud in this moment to tell you that those are my principles. And 50 years from now, I would still be most proud to tell you those are my principles. You see, very similar to searching for our purpose, is a rose that blossoms. Many of us look at the rose and think, wow, that's so beautiful. It is not necessarily just the rose that is involved in the process of building and creating that beautiful rose. It is the nourishment we give to the soil, the water we continuously feed it, the sunlight that comes into the space of the rose, and that that is what makes it beautiful. That is what allows it to grow. So as we're seeking our purpose, we can cultivate the grounds for a beautiful, beautiful, purposeful life. And here are my five. Number one, stand committed to the ethics of my faith. This taps into my spirituality. At the core of everything, I'm a spiritual being. Number two, challenge my assumptions. And I took the best, very similar to the individuals and the organizations I shared with you in the beginning of this talk, I took the best from them. Adam Braun, who runs Pencils of Promise, said, if you challenge your assumptions, you will find your truth. So every day I knock down my belief systems. What are the things that I was grown up to live, grown up to understand? I want to see what else exists. Is that the only thing that exists? I want to know more. So every day I will continue to challenge my assumptions. Pursue knowledge, experiences, and company that inspire. Interestingly, this was inspired by Will Smith. Come from and follow my heart. This was a really important one for me. 
Because to trust myself in any moment is its truest form, change happening within. And I was inspired by Paulo Coelho for this one. The last one was stand in service to my family, community, and the global world. You see, I looked at the greatest individuals that I wanted to see myself as, the individuals that I thought had this immense purpose in life. And I didn't look at the creation of what they created, but the grounds upon which they cultivated that beautiful creation. And one of the most common threads was that they stood in service to others. Whether it was an organization or an individual or a social enterprise, it didn't matter. They stood in service to the individuals that they were serving. And that was inspired by Gandhi, who said, the best way to find yourself is in the service of others. These are my five principles. I can now rest and take a deep breath and be comfortable that I'm living a purposeful life. And the fruits upon which I get to grow all these wonderful things will grow inevitably. They will grow inevitably because now I've built the core of what a purposeful life looks like. I've committed to it. And that's actually the secret sauce. Commitment. Because if you truly want to create change within yourself, within the world, within your families, within your local communities, as agents of change, we can have the principles and we can have the purpose but we actually have to be married to it. You cannot date change. <laughs> you cannot wake up one day and say, I'm good, thank you so much. <laughs> it has to be a continuous effort, a continuous energy. It has to be something that you completely commit to every day, every waking hour that you have. Wake up every morning beside your principles or your wife, and say, I do, every single morning. That commitment to change is truly the secret sauce. So my request to you is that as you move forward and create that change, think about the five principles that connect with yourself. Think about the five principles that you would be most proud of in your life, not today, not tomorrow, but 20, 30, 40 years from now. The ones that will cultivate the beautiful flowers that you want to grow in your garden. The ones that you're going to be energized by every single day. Because if it doesn't fit in this, I don't think I want it. But if it fits, I'm in. So, I'm going to ask you again. And this time I'll give you more than just a few moments. What are your five principles? What are the things that you will stand for no matter what? Thank you very much.